Hi, my name is Arkady Rukhmovich, and today I want to tell you about our work entitled Some More the Merrier, Reducing the Cost of Large-Scale MPC. Uh, this is joint work with Dove Gordon from George Mason University and Daniel Stern from Paraton Labs. So as the title suggests, uh, this paper is going to be about optimizing the performance of M secure multi-party computation or MPC. And in particular, we're going to look at the setting where we want to run a secure computation between, you know, very large numbers of parties. But unfortunately, you know, even though MPC has been a research topic in the crypto community, you know, for over 30 years, most of the truly practical protocols are really specialized for small numbers of parties, think, you know, two, three or four parties. And the reason for that is that in most of the protocols today, uh, as the number of parties grows, the per party cost actually increases as well. So we're not getting sort of save savings by increased number of parties. Instead, the costs increase. And so in general, we don't look at the case for many number of parties. And this uh, brings us to our goal, which is how do we build large scale MPC such that the per party cost diminishes as the number of parties grows. And so, you know, with this goal in mind, we achieve the following result. Our main theorem says that assuming a secure pseudo random generator, uh, there exists an MPC protocol that's secure against a static malicious adversary corrupting at most a third of the parties uh, that has uh, both communication and computation that decreases as N grows. And in particular, uh, the communication sort of behaves as O of um, the circuit size over the number of parties. Uh, while the computation grows as s log n over n times the circuit size, uh, where s is a statistical security parameter. So today I'm going to present to you how this uh, construction works. But uh, before I do that, I want to quickly say that we're of course not the first ones to achieve uh, you know, MPC whose cost decreases number of parties increase. In particular, traditionally, uh, such MPC protocols fall under the title of sublinear MPC. And the reason is that when you look at the total cost of protocol, if it grows sublinearly as the number of parties increases, then the average per party cost uh, is decreasing. There are two general approaches for achieving sublinear MPC. Uh, the first one of these introduced by Dan Gard et al. back in 2010 is to use SIMD computation. And the basic idea behind SIMD computation is that instead of operating on individual inputs, we'll instead operate on vectors of inputs component-wise. So instead of adding two integers, for example, we'll add you know, component-wise two vectors of integers. And we can set this up in such a way that the cost of doing this in MPC is essentially the same for adding two vectors as it is for adding two individual elements. And thus, of course, if we pack in enough values into these vectors, then this uh, achieves significant savings in our MPC and allows us to get costs that grow sublinearly in N. But there is an important thing to remember, which is that there's an overhead. Because we want to operate on vectors, that means that we need our circuit to sort of be nicely aligned or be what's called a SIMD circuit. And to convert a general circuit to the SIMD circuit, uh, we have to pay some overhead. That's going to be a big bottleneck for this approach. On the other hand, another way of getting sublinear MPC is something called committee-based MPC. And here's the idea is instead of running our MPC protocol in all end parties, let's first elect a small committee, in particular, say a committee of size O of poly log N to preserve the uh, you know, honest party threshold, and just have those committee members run an MPC protocol for us where everybody else just provides input and then kind of sits idle. And the point is, of course, you know, because all these uh, non-committee members are doing nothing, the total amount of work and hence also the average amount of work does decrease. Uh, but this also has a drawback that the committee members still do a good amount of work, right? So the non-committee members do nothing, but the committee members do do a lot of work. And you know, both of these approaches sort of have some drawbacks and uh, our solution really is going to take these and combine them to sort of get the best out of each one in order to achieve a solution that beats all prior ones. In particular, let's uh, quickly compare our solution to the best prior available solutions. Uh, so if you look at the best SIMD based solution by Demgard et al, uh, you will actually see that uh, our solution is 
or their solution is O of log C times worse than ours. And this of course comes from having to convert uh, you know, a general circuit into a CMD circuit. Now I should say that subsequent to our work, uh, very recently at Crypto 2021, our uh, Goyalot all showed how to reduce this overhead from O of log C uh, to O of one. Uh, but unfortunately, their protocol does not have an implementation. And so it's very hard to judge how it concretely compares to our protocols and we leave that for future work. Um, then uh, looking at sort of uh, committee-based approaches, the best solution there seems to be a folklore solution where you kind of elect a large number of committees and then have them execute you know, the whole protocol together. And sort of the way we est estimated the cost of such a committee-based solution, it turns out that it's uh, O of S times worse than uh, our solution. And finally, the best implemented solution is actually not at all a sublinear solution. It's actually a variant of the speeds protocol by Damgard et al, which has communication costs as O of N times worse than uh, our protocol here. So as you can see, you know, we essentially beat out all the previously available examples by more or less uh, sort of combining them in a more efficient way. So now before I jump into our protocols, I wanna give some preliminaries that will help you, you know, build up the basic tools that our protocol uses. Uh, but if, before I do that, I wanna talk a little bit about how we measure complexity of large scale MPC. The traditional measure in this setting is something called average complexity, which makes sense. This idea is here is we just count essentially the total cost, let's say communication cost across all parties and then divide by the number of parties. And that gives you the average cost. Uh, but this has some weird behavior. For example, it benefits from having many parties that do nothing, right? Because they all show up in the denominator, but not in the numerator, hence reducing the average. Uh, so for example, if you think of the case of committee-based MPC, um, you know, the average complexity will decline even if the committee members do exactly as much work as they did before. So even though they're doing just as much work because all these other parties are now sitting idle, uh, the average complexity actually goes down. And for this reason, we feel that a more natural complexity notion to really consider in this setting is something called bottleneck complexity, which was proposed by Boyle et al. in 2018. And bottleneck complexity, rather than averaging the complexity across all parties, looks at the maximum cost for a single party. And this way, of course, the parties that do nothing no longer help, right? Because if parties don't do anything, they obviously aren't going to help reduce the bottleneck complexity of the party that does the most work. And additionally, you know, if you consider synchronous protocols as our protocol is, then the bottleneck party will actually determine the time it takes the protocol to complete, right? Because the protocol is likely going to have to wait until the last party completes whatever it's doing, and this party will form the bottleneck. And so because of this observation, our goal, and hopefully you will see you know, how we achieve this, is to distribute the work as evenly as possible among all the MPC parties. So we want all MPC parties to be sort of equally involved in every stage of our protocol. Uh, now let me quickly cover a few of the basic tools that we use. Uh, the first uh, tool that we use is a standard Shamir secret sharing, uh, which to share the secret just, you know, picks the random polynomial degree D and the shares happen to be points in this polynomial. And, um, you know, the point is that if you have D plus one points, you can recover the secret, but if you have less than D points, then you can't. Uh, but for this uh, talk, what's going to be important is that you can actually compute in these values. So you can add Shamir secret shared values by just adding your shares locally. And you can actually also multiply Shamir secret values by multiplying your shares locally. But of course, this causes your degree to double. And so you have to do a little extra work to drive the degree back down. Uh, so that's true for Shamir secret sharing. We're also going to consider an extension of Shamir secret sharing called PAC secret sharing. And here the basic idea is that there's no reason why you have to store only one secret. In particular, you know, before we stored the secret, the value is zero, but you could have also designated the values as a negative one and negative two, or really any points that aren't given out as shares as secrets. And the point again is that if you have a polynomial of degree D that stores some number L of secrets, if you have D plus one shares in that polynomial, you can recover all L secrets. But if you have less than D shares, you know, or less than D minus L shares, then you actually can't recover those secrets. And again, we can compute uh, on these shares, but now in a, exactly in a pairwise fashion. So the point is that by adding my local shares, I actually add all of the secrets to the pairwise value. 
And by multiplying my shares, what I can do is I can multiply uh, the paired secrets, but again, you know, the degree doubles. And so again, I'm gonna have to do work to reduce that degree back down. Um, another standard tool that we're going to use is called additive secret sharing. So for those who don't remember, out of the secret sharing is the basic idea where to share a secret, I just pick and random values that sum up to that secret, you know, in say a field. And, you know, each party sort of gets one of these shares. And then we have an extension of out of the secret sharing that we also use called authenticated secret sharing. And here's the idea is in addition to that out of the secret sharing of a secret S, we also add a Mac key alpha and we secret share alpha as well as alpha times S. And you can think of this as essentially as authentication of secrets so that there's no way for you to modify what the secret is and successfully open it unless you know alpha. And the nice property is that both these forms of secret sharing uh, still allow non-interactive linear operations. For example, you can still add secret shared values by just adding your shares. Uh, so that's all the, the basic tools that we need. Um, you know, hopefully people remember how those work. And now let's dive into our protocol. And I wanna start with a very high level overview of the protocol. So we're going to follow sort of by now a very standard way of building MPC protocols, which is by using Beaver multiplication triples, which means that we're going to have an offline phase in which we generate multiplication triples and then an online phase that uses those triples to actually evaluate an arbitrary circuit C. So we're going to start by having all parties prepare these triples, but because we wanna be communication efficient, and you know, sublinear, we're going to do it using packed secret sharing. So we're going to have each part, the party essentially choose values AI and BI and then pack them in into packed secret sharing and produce the peak packed secret sharing of triples. Then we're going to take those um, packed secret shared triples and somehow unpack them. Because remember, we want to compute general circuits. So we can't want unpacked triples standard out of the triples, which we then pass into online committees uh, that then authenticate them and then uh, you know run some online uh, MPC protocol. And we'll cover all these steps in a little more detail now. So let's start with the, you know, with the triple generation step. So our goal here is to produce packed multiplication triples, you know, AI, BI, and CI, such that CI is a pointwise product of AI times BI. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a packed version of the well-known Damgard Nielsen protocol. So the idea here is that each party is going to produce a packed secret shared vector of random values A, another packed secret shared vector of random values B, and what's known as a doubly shared vector of value, random values R. What that means is it's going to have a packed sharing of R of degree D and another packed sharing of R of degree 2D, and only of the same values. And the way this works, the nice thing here is that this requires a per party communication of O of N, right? Just to sort of send out these shares to everybody else. Now, what we need to do now is, of course, the problem is that these AIs, you know, parties know these AIs. And now we want to produce random values that nobody knows. Uh, one way of doing this, of course, would be just to sum up all the AIs, but that's very inefficient because that requires essentially N AIs to produce one secret value A prime. Uh, fortunately, the Demgard Nielsen protocols observes that if you use some randomness extraction, specifically by multiplying these AIs by a Vandermond matrix, then you can actually get O of N secret values such that an adversary controlling a small number of parties doesn't actually know any of them. And you can also do the same thing for the Bs and the Rs. So you can get essentially O of N packed secret shares of A, O of N packed secret shares of Bs, and O of N packed secret shares of these Rs. And the important thing is that uh, now you've packed in O of N squared values, you know, with only O of N communication. And now we do the following, and this is again, still following Demgren Nielsen protocol. So what we do is we have each party locally multiply their packed vector A, you know, this A prime they produce times vector B prime and add to it this two uh, D secret sharing of R prime, right? So the problem is when you multiply A times B, the polynomial degree went up to 2D, but you can still blind this with uh, this 2D secret share in your bar. And then you open that value to a designated party, let's say P0. P0 can now reconstruct all of these secrets. So you can reconstruct this factor AI, AI, BI plus RI. 
And he's going to again reshare it as a pack secret sharing, but now of degree D. Now all the parties receive their shares of this pack secret sharing. They also have shares of the pack secret sharing of degree D of RI. And so they can subtract this out and actually get a pack secret sharing of CI, which is AI times BI. And so it seems great because now we have N squared packed values and it took us only O of N for party communication, but not so fast. Unfortunately, this is a problem. And the problem comes from something that was observed by um, Jenkins et al. that showed that actually this packed version of Demgard Nielsen is vulnerable to something known as a linear attack. So the idea here is that these the inputs of so the AI or the BI, if one of them is not validly formed, meaning that they're not actually uh, degree D secret shares, then the adversary can cause correlation between the pack slots. So for example, here, we see that the second slot of the product vector has a term that depends on the first slot of the input vectors. And this is very problematic. In particular, if you work through the online phase of the protocol later, you'll see that having such correlated uh, products and such correlated triples actually completely breaks security. But fortunately, as there's an easy fix in this setting, uh, basically we just need to check that all the original sharings of AI, BI, and RI are actually valid sharing in the sense that there are all lie in a degree D polynomial. And the reason we can get away with this is that we only need to do one layer of multiplication, right? We never have a case where we have to take the output of that multiplication and multiply it by something else uh, because we will do that differently. Uh, so because all the triples are generated in one layer, we just need to check them all. And in particular, because they're all done in parallel, we can actually batch this check and just do all the checks, all the shares at once. And so this ends up being really cheap. And so just adding this really does not impact the cost of our communication. And we still get O of N of O of N squared communication to get O of N squared packed values. So this is great. Now we have these uh, packed triples. So what do we do with them? Uh, so let's think about that. So what can we do with these packed triples? Oh, there we go. So the first thing we can do, of course, is we can just perform the online computation on the packed values. We already talked about this. You know, We can do SIMD computation. Uh, but unfortunately, this means that you pay an O of log C overhead to convert your circuit into a SIMD circuit. Of course, you combine this with a committee-based approach by, say, sending those pack triples to a large online committee, say, of size poly log N, and you still have this log C overhead, so this is still not great. A third approach that is going in a somewhat different direction is to say, okay, let's actually unpack these triples first. So we have these pack triples, let's just unpack them. And then we can send them to a small online committee. In particular, once we unpack them, we can convert them into additive secret shared triples. And then we can use a dishonest majority committee. Right? The nice thing is this avoids the log C overhead. But the problem is that once you unpack the triples, you actually have O of N squared triples, right? Because that's what you had. And now you have to actually send all of those O of N squared triples. And it unfortunately causes O of N squared communication. So what we do is something a little different. So what we do is we actually send pack triples to many small unpacking committees. Now this is a little bit counterintuitive because the whole point was that when these triples are packed, you know, we pack them optimally. So it requires all end parties to actually reconstruct such a triple. And so how can we get away with sending these uh, pack secret shares to a small committee which can't even reconstruct them? And here we uh, sort of use a very useful trick, which is the following. We observe that what we can do is we can have each party take their packed secret share, so their share of this packed secret sharing, and addedly share that to what we call an unpacking committee. Let's suppose that this committee is a size O of S. Then you know this requires essentially O of S times N communication per party, right? Where so if we want to, we have these N of these uh, packed triples, then it takes O of S N to send them all to this unpacking committee. And this still is now holding, you know, O of n squared uh, triple values in there. But now the question is, okay, so now that we have this, how does this online committee deal with this? How do they unpack this? And fortunately, it turns out that, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that we can actually improve this to O of n by using a PRG. But uh, it turns out that unpacking, um, you know, packed triples is actually a linear operation. And so we can do this unpacking step entirely inside of the additive sharing. So now that we've additively shared our packed shares, we can actually unpack them inside of the online committee, inside of the unpacking committee, 
by just doing linear operations with no additional communication. And so again, we now have O of n for party communication to um, extract O of n squared triples, right? And now these are actually additively shared triples. Uh, so I do wanna sort of talk about some advantages of this committee-based approach. Uh, so the one thing is that by using many committees, we get to split all of these triples to unpack across the many chosen committees. In particular, if you have committees of size O of S, we can choose you know, O of N over S such committees without having any overlap of parties. And each of these committees is now responsible for just a S over N fraction of you know, the circuit of that number of triples. And this allows us to reduce the compute in particular the computation cost of unpacking triples by just splitting the work equally across all of these unpacking committees. And the other benefit is, as we've said, is we sort of switch now to dishonest majority committees by using out of the secret sharing. And the observation here is that if we think of concrete values, you know, if we wanted to use even honest majority committees uh, to achieve, say, uh, two to the negative 40th probability of failure of selecting a good committee, you need to check, remember we started with a T less than N over three overall population, you would actually have to select about 430 parties in your committee. Whereas just to guarantee, you know, at least one honest party in each committee, you only need to select a committee of size approximately 25. So as you can see, even concretely, you know, this is savings of a factor of almost 20 uh, by electing, you know, many, many more committees and uh, keeping them as small as possible. So now moving on, of course, now we know that we unpack these things into these additive um, secret shared um, secret shared triples. Now we need to finalize how do we actually compute on this. And for this, we just follow the details of the speeds protocol. So essentially what we do is we have these unpacked additive secret shared triples. Uh, the first thing we do is authenticate them. Uh, for this, we just kind of use a standard technique that originates from the speeds paper as uh, it requires us using eight unauthenticated triples to produce one authenticated triple. Uh, we also use the same approach of speeds to do the inputs and also just end up using the speeds protocol in each of our committees to actually evaluate the circuit. So now let's think about how well does our protocol perform? So again, you know, what we've done is we use an initial pack secret sharing step to produce our triples. And then we use a you know, committee-based approach to unpack and run the online phase of the protocol. So how well does this work? Well, so for the first comparison, we actually came up with a folklore solution that most resembled our uh, approach, which is as follows. Basically you take committees, either honest majority committees or dishonest majority committees, and you use as many of them as possible to compute the offline phase and online phase of the protocol, you know, also transferring triples in the meantime. And we you know, figured out what the cost of that would be. And if you look at least the communication, you know, across the board, our protocol beats uh, the, the best possible sort of folklore committee-based approach directly because we're using these uh, practical sharing combined with uh, committee-based approach. And just a comment, we use the protocol of Cheetah et al for honest, honest majority and we use speeds for dishonest majority. Uh, then we also implemented our protocol to evaluate, you know, how does it perform completely in the real world? Now, I do have to say that we didn't have, you know, millions of parties to run this on, especially with communications. The communication is estimated and simulated, but the computation costs are actually measured uh, using the LibIOP library. And you can see the results here shows that for, you know, and at say up to two to 20, you can clearly see that, uh, you know, the performance is improving as n is increasing. And in particular for n equals two to the 20, we're able to produce, you know, a million authenticated triples in about 10 milliseconds. So hopefully you see that as n grows, clearly the you know, amount of work is decreasing and the efficiency of our protocol is growing as well. Or as we would like to say, the more the merrier. Thank you very much for listening.